Hey, it's Corey with First Line. Uh, today we're going to talk about the decon keg. Um, we made some other videos out there kind of showing the different sprayers, uh, the differences between the different sprayers, but what I want to uh, show folks today is how to basically safely uh, fill, pressurize, and use this piece of equipment. So if you come in a little closer, um, <coughs> When you get your decon keg, it may or may not have the hose attached for shipping. You're gonna see a uh, port, and, and it may look a little different. This is an older model. The ones that are shipping out now look a little different. They don't have this uh, black part up top. They have a different handle configuration, but all of this is the same. Um, you'll see a, a nozzle marked out. You'll see one that may or may not be marked in that has a cap over top of it. The cap is there not to be removed. Leave that on, you don't, that's part of the manufacturing process and for some other stuff, you don't need to use this in, leave the cap on, don't worry about that. The uh, hose that is attached to the nozzle uh, screws onto the out port. Um, this is where you fill it and this is the pressure relief valve. Pressure relief valve is very important. So right now my decon keg is charged, it's got, it's got some liquid in it, it's charged, but I wanna refill it. First thing you need to do always, always, always whenever you are uh, changing out this particular uh, equipment when you're filling it, is take this ring and, and that's gonna vent all the pressure out of the decon keg. I wanna make sure that I do that before I go and open this up. You probably will not be able to open it while it's under pressure, uh, just because there's too much pressure, but that's a good safety thing to do. We take the, the handle, it's just gonna pop free, turn it 90 degrees, and it comes out. <clears throat> so now I can take my solution for uh, coronavirus, for folks that are using Dahlgren, we say dilute it one to 10, but you can put whatever disinfectant you wanna do in here. We do not recommend the, the use of chlorine-based disinfectants in here because they'll corrode the metal. If you do use a chlorine-based disinfectant or a, um, I guess a more corrosive disinfectant, it's always a good idea to make sure you rinse it out thoroughly when you're done. Don't store that disinfectant in. And also just do a visual check inside to make sure there's not any corrosion starting because this is a pressurized canister. But that being done, we can go ahead and we can fill it up. We're gonna fill it about two thirds of the way up. Two gallons is a good uh, way to stop. We wanna leave a little bit of headspace in there because we need some room to pressurize. <clears throat> to reinsert, it's the same. We put it in, turn it 90 degrees. Get it more or less centered up. It'll seat itself when you put pressure on there and lock it down. You also wanna make sure that if you take uh, your pressure release valve and, and turn it, it'll stay in the open position. So we wanna make sure now our pressure relief valve is closed. We'll take a compressor. Um, I, always you should really use a, a pressure gauge when filling this. Um, we, we recommend that you fill it with the 90 to 100 PSI. Uh, 100 PSI is good, it's easy to remember, nice round number. The pressure uh, relief valve will actually activate at 130 PSI. Um, and that's gonna, that's the safe operating range of this piece of equipment. We're gonna uh, put our, our uh, just tire gauge on here. We got this hooked to a compressor, but you can hook it up to really any sort of, of pump. Um, and we wanna go up to 100 PSI. All right, there we go. Uh, for long-term storage, there will be a little knurled uh, lock nut, just, just like you have on top of your tires. Um, put that on there. Uh, this will hold pressure for up to 30 days. If you're using any corrosive decontaminant, don't recommend actually keeping that in there for 30 days. Using something pH neutral like Dahlgren, no problems with leaving it in there, pressurized for up to 30 days, it'll hold pressure. Now, uh, this nozzle has a couple adjustments on it. It has a safety right here. Uh, this is where you're gonna actually control your, your spray pattern. You go everywhere from a very, very, very fine mist to kind of somewhere in between. This is really good for just general use, general disinfection. And then you can even go to a stream for actually washing things off. Um, and this will spray, now we've charged it, we charge it up, this will spray at a nice continuous stream the entirety of this two gallon tank without having to recharge, without having to pump, doesn't require any batteries. This is why I really like this piece of equipment for that purpose. Uh, you can also control, not only can you control the spray pattern, 
You can also control the flow rate right here where we can actually take it down to almost a trickle if we're trying to just have a very controlled um, light mist. You can take it down uh, to a very, very low flow rate. Um, so, and then when you're done, if you're gonna, you know, keep using it, great. But if you're gonna dump it out, always, always remember, come through and vent it before you, uh, before you open that up or before you try to clean it out. So any questions you have, um, reach out to us, comments, concerns, anything you wanna see us answer in another video, training at firstlinetech.com. It's training at firstlinetech, one word, dot com. Uh, we'll try to get your questions answered as soon as we can. Thanks.